This is the AR-15, the most popular and most misunderstood rifle in America. Yoda said, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate. People fear, then hate what they do not understand. The purpose of this video and this series of basic firearms tutorial videos is to increase understanding. We'll see what some people's claims of open-mindedness and tolerance are really worth. The AR-15, or simply AR, is a very large family of related designs based on the M16 rifle originally adopted in 1963 by the United States military. Under United States federal law, since 1934, the selective fire versions are tightly restricted and taxed, and in some states banned outright, except of course for government forces. Since 1986, no new selective fire or fully automatic firearms may be produced solely for civilian sale. This is the civilian version, which fires in the semi-automatic mode, meaning one shot each time the trigger is operated. The selective fire version was first adopted by the United States Army in 1963, and the semi-automatic AR-15 version was offered for civilian sale by Colt in the same year. The AR-15 design is being produced in a vast variety of styles, options, and calibers. Its modular construction allows practically limitless customization for particular desires or needs. The same lower receiver can be mated with upper assemblies for nearly any conceivable rifle roll, from 22 rimfire to 50 browning. This AR is chambered for the original 5.56 by 45 mm NATO, which is often, but not always, interchangeable with the 223 Remington. LuckyGunner.com, the only sponsor of my website, has posted an excellent description of when it is safe to fire one in a chamber meant for the other. Some people, including a demonstrably ignorant four-star general of the United States Army, claim this cartridge is too powerful for civilians. For comparison, this is that cartridge, the one usually fired by most variants of the AR-15 family and many other NATO rifles. While this is the cartridge it replaced in military service, the 7.62 by 51 mm NATO. This is the cartridge replaced in turn, the 30-06, introduced in 1906. For further comparison, this is a 3030 Winchester deer rifle cartridge, introduced in 1895. And this is the 4570 Government, introduced in 1873. And here is a typical 12 gauge shotgun round, like the duck hunters use. These three, the 7.62, known as 308, the 30 out 6, and the 3030, are among the most popular and successful hunting cartridges of all time. The 308 and 30 6 remain in widespread use for competition as well. And yet these are considered not too powerful for civilians. Most states' hunting regulations consider the 223 cartridge not powerful enough for humane hunting of large game. Indeed, criticisms of its lack of power have followed the cartridge throughout its service life, leading to terms such as mouse gun or poodle shooter. These criticisms have also led to a search for a more powerful replacement, such as the 6.8mm cartridges now in development. Nonetheless, the 223 or 5.56mm has gained a great deal of popularity. It has a reputation for accuracy, low cost when a buying panic is not in effect, and mild recoil. While not considered powerful enough for humane large game hunting, it is powerful enough to fight with, as demonstrated by the Korean merchants who used weapons like this to defend their homes and businesses from arson mobs during the Rodney King riots. I guess some people believe they shouldn't have done that. The AR family and 223 cartridge are also very popular for medium and small game hunting or vermin control, particularly control of the feral hog epidemic sweeping several regions of the United States, and a number of competition formats, including 3-gun or USPSA multi-gun, one of the types I intend to use my rifle in. Let's identify the major features and controls. Bear in mind that there are vast numbers of modifications available for the AR family, some of which will vary widely in appearance. The following features and controls should be in the same place and do the same thing on most specimens of this design. The trigger. At present this is the standard type which came with the parts kit, but will be replaced soon 
to improve its quality. Many replacements are available, some of which may have a different appearance. The safety and selector lever. Replacements are available for this as well, some of which are ambidextrous or and or extended. On most versions, the lever to the rear and the pointer forward is the safe position, while the lever down and pointer up is for the semi-automatic position, one shot each time the trigger is operated. On military versions, the third position with the lever forward and pointer to the rear is for burst or fully automatic fire. The charging handle with latch. The handle is non-reciprocating, meaning it stays in place relative to the bolt during cycling. Several, several replacements are available, giving improved performance and durability. One will be acquired for this rifle later. The bolt stop. Extended and ambidextrous versions are available. The magazine catch. Extended and ambidextrous versions are available. The magazine well. Some lower receivers may have a modular section here to allow the use of different size magazines for different cartridges. This would also require the replacement of the upper assembly to accept those cartridges. Some competitors use funnel extensions on the well to improve the speed of their reloading. The ejection port. Standard models have a spring-loaded cover which pops open automatically when the bolt cycles. Some hunting or competition models do not have the cover. Now let's look at some of the more variable features. The muzzle. This is the standard A2 flash hider. Many replacements are available, including muzzle brakes or compensators. Some sporting models do not have any device on the muzzle. Other rifles are threaded to accept various accessories, including suppressors. The gas block and front sight. This is where gas is tapped off from the barrel into the gas tube to cycle the action. The front sight is mounted here. The post is replaceable. This is the standard A2 type, including a bayonet lug and sling swivel, which, contrary to demonstrably ignorant journalists, are not the same. The barrel. Standard lengths are 16 inches for civilian carbines, 20 inches for rifles, and 14 inches for the military M4 carbine. Longer and shorter lengths are also available, as are a wide variety of chamberings. The handguard. Many options are available, including types which have a built-in Picatinny rail, like that on top of the receiver, to accept various accessories. The military models and most standard factory models come with a cylindrical type handguard like these. The rear sight. This rifle is currently equipped with a standard A2 type rear sight adjustable by hand for elevation and windage. It has two apertures, a large aperture or rapid acquisition of targets at close range, and a smaller aperture for precision work at longer range. The two apertures are zeroed the same. This rifle has its rear sight attached to the Picatinny rail, which goes the full length of the upper receiver. Not all rifles have this rail. Some have an integral carry handle instead. Most modern production, however, does include this rail, which allows a wide variety of sighting devices to be mounted, optical, electronic, or otherwise. The forward assist. This button works on a ratchet along the side of the bolt carrier to ensure the bolt is fully closed. The very first versions did not have this, and this feature was added during the Vietnam War. Some competition or sporting models also do not have this feature. This bump is one of the improvements added to the M16A2 in the 1980s. It's intended to deflect ejected cases away from the face of a left-handed shooter. Again, some sporting or competition models may not have this feature. The pistol grip. Many options are available, some of which include a storage compartment. 
the original GI model. Looks like that. The buttstock. Many options are available, including fixed and adjustable. The, typically, the adjustable models use a shorter buffer tube. The recoil spring is inside this tube, whereas the longer fixed rifle models have a longer tube. There are also two different diameters of the shorter tube, the military and commercial diameters. Commercial is very slightly larger. Most adjustable models will have a lever used to adjust the buttstock. This one is a six position stock. This retractable type is very similar to what's issued on the M4 carbine. Now let's see how to unload and make safe a weapon of this type. The AR family was designed for ease of use, despite what some demonstrably ignorant elected officials have said. Again, controls may vary widely in appearance from one specimen to the next, but the equivalents should be in the same place and operate the same way. First, always keeping the weapon pointed in a safe direction and your fingers away from the trigger, ensure the manual safety is engaged. Most ARs will have engraved words or universal symbols to indicate the safe position. Many will have these repeated on both sides of the receiver. All that I am aware of will have the safe position with the lever to the rear and the pointer forward. Next, remove the magazine by pressing the magazine catch button. Most magazines should drop free from most lower receivers. Always remove the magazine first from any firearm which uses a detachable magazine. Always remove the supply of ammunition first. Don't be the only one professional enough. Next, pull back on the charging handle. Note how its latch must be depressed before the handle can be released. Note how the ejection port cover will open automatically as soon as the bolt carrier begins to move. Any cartridge in the chamber will then be extracted and ejected. The AR uses positive ejection with a spring-loaded plunger in the bolt face, so the charging handle does not need to be pulled vigorously to the rear to ensure ejection. To manually lock the bolt open, hold the charging handle to the rear then press on the lower part of the bolt stop while gently releasing the charging handle. When the bolt is locked open, the charging handle may be left to the rear, but this risks snagging or damage to the charging handle. Slide the charging handle forward until it latches. Leave the ejection port cover open so it may be seen to be empty. For range safety, insert an open bolt indicator. To close the weapon for storage, after ensuring no ammunition remains in the weapon and the magazine is absent, pull back on the charging handle until the bolt stop releases. Then gently lower the charging handle. This is the only time you will ride the charging handle forward. When loading live rounds, let it fly forward under spring pressure to ensure positive chambering. If necessary, use the forward assist to make sure the bolt is all the way closed. The ejection port cover may then be closed for additional protection against foreign matter. Simply pressing on the upper part of the bolt stop lever will release the bolt to slam forward. This is poor etiquette and may cause internal damage. Now let's see how to load and fire a weapon of this type. The most common magazine for the AR family holds 30 rounds of 223 or 5.56 millimeter ammunition. This is the STANAG, or NATO Standardization Agreement 30 round magazine as issued to American troops and those of many other nations. Before the current panic, they can be found used at any gun show for $10 or $12. This is a P-Mag, a polymer magazine made by Magpul and considered the best for the AR family. Before the current panic, 
This standard 30 round model was available for under $20 new retail. This is an Israeli Orlite magazine. Generally speaking, any weapon or accessory made in Israel can be expected to be of high quality, since Israel's very existence depends on it. The bolt carrier group and charging handle in my rifle were advertised as Israeli made. Different styles and capacities are available, from a single loading enhancement device to ease the loading of single cartridges for slow fire competition, to five round hunting and ten round competition magazines like these, and even fifty or one hundred round drums. The latter are usually well over one hundred dollars. Four column magazines holding sixty or more rounds are also in development. To load the standard type, cartridges are rolled in from the top. These are Azoom snap caps, solid aluminum inert dummy rounds. They're expensive, but are perfect for most forms of dry practice and function testing. They are available for most common cartridges. Aftermarket loading tools are also available. A charger, also known as a stripper clip, may also be used with this adapter, the charger guide, also called a spoon. All the magazines I have will work with these chargers and guides. The Stanag, the PMAG, the Orlite, and these 10 round competition magazines which are simply shortened Stanags. The charger guide is mounted on the magazine. The charger is inserted into the charger guide and then up to 10 rounds at once are pushed down into the magazine. For occasions when you expect to fire a large number of rounds such as a training class or a large competition you would expect to have your cartridges already loaded on chargers. Military ammunition is often packaged on chargers and issued that way. You can find your own chargers to preload your own ammunition at gun shows or the internet. Likewise you can find or make bandoliers to carry the loaded chargers. Modern magazines are usually of good quality and do not need to be downloaded below their full capacity for reliable function. The PMAG sometimes comes with a cap to protect the cartridges after loading. Aftermarket caps which fit any AR magazine are also available. Once the magazine is loaded, it is inserted into the magazine well until it catches. Obviously the protective cap must be removed before insertion. The PMAG allows the cap to be stored on its own base. You can see, hear, and feel when the magazine catches. It is not necessary to slam the magazine into place even when fully loaded and with the bolt closed. Watch and listen closely for the magazine catch to snap into place. Slamming the magazine into place, especially with the bolt open, may cause rounds to bounce out of the magazine, causing a malfunction. If the bolt is already locked open, pressing on the top of the bolt stop lever, here, will release the bolt to slam forward, chambering the first round. If the bolt is closed but the chamber is empty, pull back on the charging handle all the way, then release it to fly forward under spring pressure. For carry in the field or remaining available for defense, ensure the manual safety is engaged. The ejection port cover may also be closed as it will open automatically without further action if the bolt carrier moves. The manual safety does not need to be released to load or unload the AR family. To fire, aim, release the manual safety, and press the trigger in the usual way. 
Civilian versions of the AR family use normal semi-automatic operation, meaning they fire one shot each time the trigger is operated, automatically extracting and ejecting the spent case, then chambering the next from the magazine. This continues until all ammunition is spent, at which point the bolt will lock back and will remain locked open when the empty magazine is removed. To reload, press the magazine catch button. Again, most magazines should drop free. Insert a loaded magazine, press the bolt stop to close the bolt and chamber the first round, and resume firing. This should conclude the basic operation of the AR family of firearms. The AR-15 family has been widely copied, derived from, and exported. A weapon of this type, or whose controls are similar, may plausibly be encountered anywhere in the world. Every responsible citizen should know how to operate one in case of emergency. That is the point of this video and this series of basic firearms tutorial videos.